Lipid digestion, absorption, and transport presents a problem. The problem is, is that lipids do not like water. They are nonpolar substances and they do not dissolve in water, but our blood's mostly water and the small intestine lumen's mostly water. So what are we going to do? We have these structures, these molecules that separate out from water, but I still want to transport them and digest them and absorb them in watery environments. Why I bring this up is that you'll notice that di the lipid digestion, absorption, and transport is a lot more complex than with the other nutrients. So I really recommend paying special attention to this section accordingly. So as you'll remember, lipid digestion does begin in the mouth with the action of lingual lipase, which as the name suggests, this enzyme helps to start breaking down lipids. In the stomach, I have a little bit of lipid digestion that occurs with the secretion of the enzyme gastric stomach lipase, uh, and this helps digest mostly medium and short chain fatty acids. The majority of lipid digestion occurs and the majority of absorption occurs though in the small intestine. And there are really two types of material that are really important for helping to digest lipids. One is bile, which again we learned about in chapter three, and the other one is this pancreatic lipase, okay? Basically, bile helps to emulsify fats. I recommend reviewing that section of chapter three if, if you need to review it. But remember, bile helps to, bile salts form these little kind of circular <laughs> encasements around lipids, which allows them to float in the watery environment of the small intestine. It emulsifies them, allowing them to dissolve in water. And when we've broken down a large lipid into these smaller globules because of bile, and it forms a structure called a micelle, gastric lipase can then start acting on the lipids within that micelle in the small intestine to break down those lipids. Okay. And then really most lipids are absorbed in the small intestine. Whatever's left over is going to pass on to the large intestine. If there's a lot of uh, lipids that are going to the large intestine, chances are that your uh, feces is going to be really oily and uh, a bit uncomfortable to pass. So remember that in the small intestine bile, here's my bile salts, here's my bile salts, they form, oops, see wrong way. They form these like little encasements around my lipids, which will be in the center to help it form this micelle. Okay, so all of this, this is like the small intestine lumen. And this micelle is going to contain all the lipids. It's going to contain sterols. It's going to contain triglycerides. It's going to contain the fat-soluble vitamins as well. And you'll notice here is a villus. Okay, so this is a cell in the villus wall. Notice that when this micelle heads to the villus, all of its contents are going to enter in and they move through passive diffusion into the cell of the villus. And this micelle actually breaks down and we can forget about it, okay? So micelle, only think about the small intestine, okay? Micelle is gone, it was an emuls it helped me to emulsify, helped me to carry lipids around. But now that I've absorbed them, through the wall of the small intestine, they break down. So now I have my small intestine cell and I have a bunch of lipids in there. As these lipids move out through the other side of the small intestine cell, if you'll remember, the membrane of cells is made up of phospholipids. So basically, as these lipids are leaving the small intestine cell, they get wrapped in these phospholipids. Okay, so here's my lipids wrapped in phospholipids. And now we have a new lipid transporter, something called a lipoprotein. And this specific lipoprotein is something called a chylomicron. Okay, so these lipids now are wrapped in phospholipids to form a lipoprotein, one specifically called chylomicron. And now this chylomicron, the whole structure, too big to enter the bloodstream. 
too big to enter into these blood capillaries because remember these large lipids are actually absorbed into these lacteal vessels this white vessel that we see here here's my lacteal remember that lacteal vessels are type of lymphatic vessels these bypass the liver but eventually these vessels drain into the bloodstream in and around this area in and around something called the thoracic duct Okay, so like I mentioned, when these lipids get wrapped in phospholipids, so they can move around the watery environments, they, this whole complex is something called a lipoprotein. Okay, this is important because this is how we get the terms LDL and VLDL and HDL, okay? So this is an example of a lipoprotein, and as you'll see, the walls... The casing of that lipoprotein is all made up of phospholipids. And I just gave you the example as how the lipids, when they're leaving the small intestine cell, they get wrapped in phospholipids. Okay? So this is a lipoprotein. Think of the name lipoprotein, lipid protein. Okay? Well, the outside is lipid. Okay? The main parts are lipid. The inside is full of lipids. That's how I transport my lipids around. And you'll also see these big green membrane bound proteins that are found in there as well okay that's how that gets the name lipoprotein now we've just learned about chylomicrons being a lipoprotein chylomicrons are the main lipoprotein that takes lipids from the small intestine delivers them to cells okay i'm going to drop off lipids at my cells and then comes to the liver to be broken down at the liver, I'm going to make new lipoproteins. In particular, I'm going to make a lipoprotein called VLDL, or very low density lipoprotein. This is the lipoprotein that delivers lipids from the liver to body cells. And as it's losing triglycerides in particular, it becomes LDL. And LDL, or low density lipoprotein, this is mainly full of cholesterol. And LDL, which is sometimes called LDL cholesterol, that's how I deliver cholesterol to body cells. Okay, so this slide summarizes the main lipoproteins. And I wish I had had this in my own undergrad career because this concept always really confused me. Okay, so remember, when you think lipoprotein, think of a lipid transporter. Think of this complex that's carrying lipids around the body. Remember, chylomicron, that's the one that's leaving the small intestine, entering into the lymph, and delivering lipids, in particular triglycerides, to body cells. Okay? Remember, VLDL, this is the one that's made in the liver. All the rest of them are made in the liver. And this one basically, again, delivers triglycerides. And as it loses triglycerides, it becomes LDL. And then LDL, like it says here, its main role is to deliver cholesterol. Now the issue is that LDL can build up in artery walls, narrowing them, leading cardiovascular disease. We'll get back to that. HDL, so this is a new one that our liver is making, high density lipoprotein. This one actually is sometimes called good cholesterol because it actually picks up cholesterol and returns it to the liver to be broken down. Now, why are these called very low density versus high density? Triglycerides are low in density. They have low amount of mass for their volume. As these lipoproteins lose triglycerides, their density goes up. So a very low density lipoprotein has a lot of triglycerides. Lose triglycerides, lose triglycerides, lose triglycerides. Okay, now it's no longer very low density. Now it's low density. Okay. A high density lipoprotein, like we said that our liver makes, this one is really high in protein. Proteins are dense and it's a lot lower in triglycerides, which are low in density. That's how it gets its name. Okay, so this is quite a slide and there's a lot of science going on here, but I needed to give you that, that preamble in order for us to understand what we're going through. But quite honestly, most of what's on this slide I've already covered. Okay, so remember, in our small intestine, if I actually just go back a few slides, in our small intestine, we absorb these chylomicrons. 
Okay, so we're starting there. Here I have my chylomicron CM right here. This chylomicron is now in the blood. And remember, the chylomicron's main role is to deliver triglycerides. So here it is, it's moving. And here are some body cells, like my muscle tissue, and body cells that express an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. These are ones that are able to take some lipids from those lipoproteins and bring them into, they take them up by the cells. So then my chylomicron returns to the liver where it's broken down. So here we are at stage three, where it is broken down into its components. The liver then makes something called very low density lipoprotein, which is kind of like a chylomicron in the sense that it delivers triglycerides. That's its main role. So again, here's my very low density lipoprotein. Here again, I have body tissues. Here again, I have lipoprotein lipase, and that lipoprotein lipase at the tissues is going to basically help those tissues take up those uh, lipids. Remember, as VLDL loses triglycerides, it's eventually going to become LDL, low-density lipoprotein. Now, LDL has three potential fates, and one of them is a big concern. So for instance, some cells are going to need cholesterol. And if that's the case, well, LDL is my primary cholesterol delivery system. Here, here's some cholesterol, okay? That's what we see here, cells taking up cholesterol. Another thing that could potentially happen is that LDL can return to the liver to be broken down. That's actually desirable. That's all desirable, whereas C is not desirable. Unfortunately, having a lot of LDL in the blood increases the risk that this LDL, also known as bad cholesterol, can be oxidized. And when it is oxidized, it's more damaging. It is more likely to damage artery walls, and it's more likely to, to deposit into artery walls. And what that happens when LDL deposits into artery walls so here's, that's a bunch of LDL, and it's more complex than that, but that can lead to a narrowing of the arteries. And if this, for instance, happens in a heart artery, well, I have less room for blood to flow. And if something else gets stuck there, like a blood clot, well, then that completely blocks blood flow, and that can lead to a heart attack, and if it happens in your brain, brain blood vessel, that can lead to a stroke. Okay, so having too high LDL in the blood is a problem. We'll get back to how to reduce it later on. The third lipoprotein worth discussing is high-density lipoprotein. And like we said, high-density lipoprotein made by the liver, okay, and HDL basically goes around the body picking up cholesterol and then bringing it back to the liver to be, uh, to be broken down. Okay, so having a lot of high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol, as it's sometimes known, actually has the opposite effect more or less than LDL. And that, and having high levels of HDL is associated with a lower risk of heart disease. So this is one of the hardest concepts that we're going to cover this semester. Knowing how lipids are transported is actually really important because it helps us learn a little bit more about cardiovascular disease and what causes it. Students tend to struggle with this concept because there is so much science in it. So I really recommend reviewing it several times. There's also kind of some interactive animations for this particular slide that can also help you go through it. It is often an exam question, so there's a little hint for you. I can't promise you it'll be this semester, but it often is. So I really recommend spending time, some time with this concept if it's harder to understand.